So I think I have an idea how to bail Boeing out of this whole max mess. Real estate. And not just any real estate, but the pre-manufactured home kind of real estate. And I'm willing to lend my name to it too. And all of you, my subscribers, can get in on the ground floor and invest in the project as well. A pristine desert aviation themed community located just outside Palm Springs, California. Feel the balmy desert winds as they welcome you to Maximus Estates. The only residential development in the world consisting entirely of brand new, inoperable of course, 737 MAX jets. Just imagine the look on your friends' faces when they arrive at your palatial new estate for the barbecue and they see your luxurious new desert oasis. Just make sure they don't drop the potato salad due to their envious shock. What? Too soon? Oh boy, here comes the Max Hates Boeing comments. It's a joke. I'm kidding. I kid. However, the folks over at Boeing may not be laughing anytime soon. A serious Boeing Max update is next on Maximus. Greetings everybody, Prefab Modular Real Estate Tycoon Maximus here. I hope you're all doing well wherever you may be all around this great big world of ours. Well, it's been a while since my last Boeing Max update and there's a lot of news to talk about, so let's get to it. Reuters reported last week that Boeing quietly confirmed an earlier report from April 16th that Boeing had indeed halted all deliveries of new MAX jets after more electrical problems caused the grounding of 109 MAX aircraft worldwide. Those jets remain grounded as airlines are still awaiting a fix from Boeing. On April 9th, Boeing contacted 16 airlines and identified the MAX jets that needed to be pulled from service and grounded until a fix could be decided upon. Among those grounded planes, 71 of them are flown by U.S. carriers Southwest Airlines, United and American Airlines. The other 49 aircraft are distributed among global carriers. As a result of Boeing's warning of new electrical problems and subsequent MAX groundings, on April 20th, the FAA issued an official airworthiness directive ordering Boeing to come up with a repair solution and implement it before any of the newly grounded planes can be cleared to fly again. However, in addition to the airworthiness directive, the FAA also announced an investigation into the origin of the problem, which arose when a backup electrical power control unit was secured to a rack on the flight deck with fasteners in a new modified installation process in place of the rivets previously used. This change was performed in such a way that it didn't provide a complete electrical grounding path to the unit. The lack of secure electrical grounding could potentially cause malfunctions in a variety of systems such as the engine anti-ice systems and the auxiliary power unit. Boeing said they initially discovered the issue after the 20-month grounding was lifted on a production plane during the normal construction process. In addition to the airworthiness directive and new investigation into the problem, the FAA is also requiring Boeing to put in writing and document that numerous 737 MAX subsystems would not be affected by the electrical grounding issues. Now the problem for airlines is that the additional FAA requirement could delay the release of Boeing's fix for the 100 or so jets worldwide that have been taken out of service because of the problem. And consequently, that's going to cause additional headaches for airlines because they were assuming there would be a relatively quick fix lasting a week or two tops. But a month into the second max grounding is and airlines are admitting they don't know when the planes will fly again. They still haven't heard from Boeing yet exactly what the repair process for the problem will even be. And now, not surprisingly, there is word from Boeing that there may be even more electrical grounding problems related to the most recent groundings. But wait. There is more. In addition to the FAA's airworthiness directive, an investigation, and also requiring Boeing to prove this problem won't spread to other components, there's this. The FAA also announced that it has begun auditing Boeing's process for making minor design changes throughout the product line. The FAA said in a statement, These initiatives are part of our commitment of continually evaluating and improving our oversight of all aspects of aviation safety, recognizing that catching errors at the earliest possible point enhances what is already the world's safest form of transportation. 
Boeing said it's working closely with the FAA and our customers to address the ground path issue in affected 737s. Okay, so then what exactly is the electrical problem causing this latest grounding? For that, let's go directly to the FAA's Airworthiness Directive. The FAA is adopting a new Airworthiness Directive for certain Boeing Company Model 737-8s and 737-9 airplanes. This AD was prompted by manufacturing design changes to certain metallic support panel assemblies installed in the flight deck which resulted in insufficient electrical bonding of the panels and consequent insufficient electrical grounding of installed equipment. This AD requires modification of the electrical bonding of these assemblies to provide sufficient electrical grounding for equipment installed in the flight deck. The FAA is issuing this AD to address the unsafe condition of these products. The FAA received a report of an electrical bonding and grounding issue that was discovered during the testing of a newly manufactured Boeing Model 737-8 airplane. During standard production testing by Boeing, electrical power systems did not perform as expected. An investigation identified insufficient bonding of certain metallic support panel assemblies installed in two areas of the flight deck, which affects the electrical grounding of installed equipment. The reported event occurred prior to the delivery of that airplane. The investigation identified design changes to the flight deck support panel assemblies, which affected the dedicated bonding and grounding paths that existed prior to the changes. The affected areas are the P6 panel assembly, including the mounting tray for the standby power control unit, the SPCU, located behind the first officer, and the main instrument panel, the MIP assembly, located in front of and between the captain and the first officer. The issue affects certain Boeing Model 737-8 and 737-9 airplanes manufactured after the design changes were implemented. All affected in-service airplanes passed all testing prior to delivery, and there have been no reported in-service failures due to this condition. However, without dedicated grounding paths implemented by design, there is a potential for degradation or loss of the existing uncontrolled ground paths on those airplanes over time. Degradation of bonds, essential for the electrical grounding of equipment, if not addressed, could affect the operation of certain systems including engine ice protection and resulted loss of critical functions and or multiple simultaneous flight deck effects which may prevent continued safe flight and landing. The FAA is issuing this AD to address the unsafe condition of these products. All affected airplanes, both in the U.S. and worldwide, have been removed from service pending development and implementation of approved corrective action that will address the unsafe condition. Well, that was a lot of words, huh? So as if all that wasn't enough for Boeing to handle, this just broke late this week. Now the FAA has issued a new airworthiness directive regarding carriers to perform checks on CFM International Leap 1B engines used exclusively on the Boeing 737 MAX family of jets in order to prevent engine corrosion caused by long-term storage, which might later lead to a loss of engine thrust. The FAA is adopting a new airworthiness directive for certain CFM LEAP 1B model turbofan engines. This AD was prompted by multiple reports of pressure subsystems PSS unit faults due to pressure transducer corrosion following extended storage periods. So did I leave anything out? How many of you were even still with me after all that techno speak? Let me know in the comments section down below if you hung in till the end. So usually after I give a Boeing update like this, I get all the oh Maximus is bashing Boeing again comments, but that's fine. If people think reporting the news is bashing Boeing, then I'll plead guilty. But like I tell you, I'm a fan of Boeing and want them to succeed. And I would love nothing more than for Boeing to actually produce some good news to report, and I'll be the first to bring it to you. However, there hasn't been much good news as of late. Well, that's all I have for now. Remember, if you like the work we do here and you want to help support the channel so I can continue bringing you the best content possible, you can always donate via the Buy Me A Cup Of Coffee link or visit the Maximus Aviation Merchandise Shops. Links are in the description. And before you go, as usual, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and ring that bell. And remember, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. 
And I will see you next time. In the air. Yeah. This is Maximus. Maximus.